If there's one great truth about lenses, this is it. Any one lens can't do lots of different things and do them well. Of course, you've heard of those super bargain lenses, you know, the ones that say they'll do lots of different things, uh, fast f-stop, compact macro capabilities, very lightweight. Lenses are like politicians. Don't trust the ones that say they'll do everything for everybody. Sharpness will suffer, contrast will suffer. The pictures that you take with a super bargain lens won't look as good as the pictures you take with your prime lens. The best lens performers are the ones that are designed to do a specific job. Which brings me to this lens, the macro lens. We've been running a series here on World of Photography telling you how to get closer with your camera. I've told you about close-up filters like these. You just put them on the front of your lens. It allows you to get much closer. We've also talked about extension tubes like this one, which enables your lens to focus closer. And even this accessory looks fairly complicated, but it's easy to use a set of bellows. But if you want to be able to get close to your subjects without using any of these accessories, this is what you need, a macro lens. Now, what limits how closely you can focus to your subjects is how far away from the film plane you can actually move the glass in the lens. Here's my normal lens. If I keep turning the focusing ring, the lens extends until it stops. And that's as close as I can focus. Now, watch what happens when I put my macro lens on my camera. As I turn, the elements move further and further and further out. Because this lens has been designed for close focusing. And believe me, coming up with that design was no easy trick. The elements inside the 50 millimeter macro are actually floating. They shift as you continue to focus closer and closer. In fact, the shooting characteristics of this lens continue to change as you focus. If the lens is set on infinity or even 10 or 20 feet, the lens tends to behave as a standard 50 millimeter lens. Let me pull this back into infinity. So I want to show you something. As you rack to focus out, the optical characteristics inside this lens change. The lens becomes a true macro lens, one perfect for close-up work because it's going to produce edge-to-edge -edge sharpness at very close distances. As you can see, it can go into about seven inches. A normal lens is a curved field lens. A macro lens, due to its close-up requirements, has got to be a flat field lens. This macro lens automatically changes from a curved field lens to a flat field lens automatically as you focus closer. If I can use this lens for its macro capabilities, and I can also shoot distant scenes as well, why don't I just always use this lens as my normal lens? Well, the answer is that to get this lens to do what it does with its macro capabilities, something had to be sacrificed. And that's something? Speed. This is a 50 millimeter F3.5. My normal 50 millimeter is much faster, an F1.2. You trade off speed to get that combined curve field and flat field capability. Now, if you want close focusing ability plus speed, you're probably going to need to have two 50 millimeter lenses, this macro, just like this, and your normal lens, uh, one, two, as compared to an F3.5. So you'll have both a fast lens and close up focusing capability. Now, don't think that the uh, macro lens up there is any substitute for either the bellows or the extension tubes. Quite to the contrary, in fact, because since the macro lens is designed for close-up work, it'll be a great complement to both of those pieces of equipment, and you can bet you're going to get some excellent results by combining the two. We've shown you a lot of different ways to get close to your subjects, and whether you use a set of close-up filters, extension tubes, bellows, or a macro lens, there are a few important things to keep in mind. Focus. It's critical. Depth of field will be very shallow, and the closer and closer you get, the shallower the depth of field will be. So focus very carefully. And whenever possible, try to compose your shot so, of course, the shot looks good, but also make sure that everything you need in focus is in the same plane. And close your lens down as far as you can to F11 or F16 to get the maximum depth of field. Also, lock your camera down on a tripod and stop by the store and pick up a cable release so that you don't accidentally shake your camera during the time the exposure is being made. Now, with close-up photography, the subjects are small, but the possibilities are infinite. As you get closer and closer, you'll discover through your camera worlds that were hidden from your sight, exciting worlds to experience and to photograph.